Hello, and welcome back to Jenna Gets Creative. Today is the third Friday of the month, and that means it's time for another Art Addicts Alliance upload. This month, our theme is Sleepless Nights, so be sure to check out our other members and guest channels to see what everyone else did with the prompt. I'll have them all linked in the description. We did just accept four new members yesterday, so congratulations and welcome to them. You guys can post this round late if you want to participate or skip it. Weblight Dreams is going to be doing your introduction in her video today, so go watch that. If you're not a part of the Art Addicts Alliance and you're interested, we do still have spots open. We're looking for fellow artists who post art-focused content at least once a month. If you have at least 100 subscribers, you can apply to be a permanent member right away. If you're not sure about the commitment or you have less subscribers right now, you're also welcome to apply to be an official guest. We have one official guest this month, our friend Pace Mask, who's participated for a couple of months now. Check him out too. I'll leave the link to our Facebook page in the description as well. Message the page if you want to apply. By the way, if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell, and set it to all notifications. I upload every Tuesday and Thursday at minimum, with bonuses some weeks. This week's been a particularly active one here on my channel, since this is my fourth video of the week. If you like this video, don't forget to hit like and leave a comment down below. What would you have drawn for this prompt if you were participating? When I sat down to do a piece for this prompt and started thinking about what I should do for Sleepless Nights, the first thing that came to my mind was Aaron Morgenstern's novel, The Night Circus. I love this book so much, I actually own three copies, a hardcover, a paperback, and the ebook. If you've never read it, I highly recommend it. I'm a huge bookworm, always have been, and this is one of the few books that leaves me not wanting to start another book just yet, every time I finish, because I'm not ready to leave this book's world. It's also particularly special to me because it's a NaNoWriMo book, and I've done NaNoWriMo many times myself. NaNoWriMo stands for National November Writing Month, even though it's quite the international community now, and it challenges you to write a 50,000 word manuscript during the month of November, which is 30 days. That's 1,667 words per day if you average it out. Erin Morgenstern has said that her original manuscript for The Night Circus is the result of three rounds of NaNoWriMo, so she built on her first year's project twice over the next two years before she had a full-length draft of this novel. I know Water for Elephants by Sarah Grun also started out as a NaNoWriMo project, and there are others. Erin Morgenstern just published her second novel this month, and although it's not a sequel, I'm really excited to read it when I get to it on my reading list. It's called The Starless Sea. The Night Circus is the story of a very unusual traveling circus and the key players who make it so unique. Le Cirque des Rêves, or the Circus of Dreams, arrives and departs at night. No one knows when it's coming, when it will leave, or where it's going next. It's only open from sunset to sunrise. Everything about the circus itself is completely devoid of color, only black and white. Some visitors become so enamored with the circus that they start to dress the part, also wearing only black and white, and they start to form a community. They gather when the circus is away to share stories about the circus, and they let their fellow fans of the circus from other places far away know when the circus has arrived so that they can travel to come experience it again. They call themselves the Reveurs the dreamers, and they start to wear a pop of red in their black and white attire to mark themselves as such. Little do they know, the circus isn't just a circus, it's a stage and a battleground for two young magicians. For decades, two of London's rival stage magicians have been pitting their apprentices against each other in a show of talent and finely practice skills to prove which magician is the better teacher and therefore the greater master. These students never know who their opponent is or when the competition has truly begun. The competition ends when one is no more. Le Cirque des Rêves is the latest competition, and all the other performers and crew of the circus are unknowingly wrapped up in it. Celia, the headlining illusionist performing and traveling with the circus, is Prospero's daughter and candidate. Marco, the circus's manager from afar, is her opponent. 
neither knows who their opponent is, though they do know each other. They take turns making magical changes to the circus and falling in love with each other through their work, until eventually the sheer quantity of competing spells and illusions cast upon the circus start to have unfortunate consequences for everyone else. As you read through the novel, sections are broken up by short excerpts from a river memoirs published by the character Frederick Thiessen, and I would like to read a couple of them now. For transparency, I am reading from the 2012 Anchor Canada Edition Trade paperback format, and I will include the page numbers I'm reading from in the caption file if you want those. The whole of Le Cirque des Rêves is formed by series of circles. Perhaps it is a tribute to the origin of the word circus, deriving from the Greek kirkos, meaning circle or ring. There are many such nods to the phenomenon of the circus in a historical sense, though it is hardly a traditional circus. Rather than a single tent with rings enclosed within, this circus contains clusters of tents like pyramids, some large and others quite small. They are set within circular paths contained within a circular fence, looping and continuous. There is so much that glows in the circus, from flames to lanterns to stars. I have heard the expression trick of the light applied to sights within Le Cirque des Rêves so frequently that I sometimes suspect the entirety of the circus is itself a complex illusion of illumination. There are tents, I am certain, that I have not discovered in my many visits to the circus. Though I have seen a great deal of the sights, traveled a number of the available paths, there are always corners that remain unexplored, doors that remain unopened. My favorite quote from this book isn't one of Frederick Thiessen's excerpts. I don't know what page number it comes from, but I had it stamped on a bracelet quite a few years ago, and I believe it said, To Celia, by one of the other circus members. We lead strange lives, chasing our dreams from place to place. That line has always reminded me of another favorite quote of mine from Tolkien's books, Not all those who wander are lost. Let me know in the comments down below if you've read The Night Circus yourself, or if you think you'll find it and read it now that I've introduced you to it. It really is one of my absolute favorites. The piece is inspired by the artwork that goes along with everything to do with this book. The book's various covers, the merchandise associated with the book, decorations at the book's launch. Everything is simple, stylized, and mostly black and white, with pops of red and silver. This is done on Strathmore Vision watercolor paper, using exactly four pans from my Kuretake Gansai Tambi collection. Black, cadmium red, white, and white gold. I love working with Gansai Tambi because it's very similar to gouache. You can dilute it a lot and use it like watercolor, but you can also get very opaque colors out of it. It is supposed to be a highly lightfast material, though I've never been able to find actual testing results from Kuretake. I'm currently conducting a basic light fastness test on a lot of my paints, and these are among them. So sometime early next year, I will review and reveal those results. One thing I've noticed that makes Gansai Tambi very different from gouache is that when you use the paint in less diluted washes to get opaque colors, those parts don't dry matte, but the areas where you water it down to look and act like Western watercolors, it does. That means in a piece like this, where I used the paint both ways, the only thing shiny about the background is the iridescent flecks from the white gold I splattered in, but on the main illustration, where I've used the paint more opaquely, it looks like I've already varnished it. Welcome and congratulations again to the newest members of the Art Addicts Alliance. I'm so glad you've joined us. Again, I will be linking all of our members and our current official guest in the description down below, as well as a link to our Facebook page where you can message us if you would like to apply. Also, check out the Facebook page if you would like to vote for our monthly topics. We could really use some more votes so we don't keep ending up with options that win by a single vote. <laughs> Thanks for watching, I hope you'll check out everyone else's videos and also look back on the whopping three other videos I put out this week, and I'll see you again on Tuesday. Bye guys!